many of you love to travel? You like to travel? I know y'all love, love to travel. Um, awesome, awesome. Have you guys ever spontaneously traveled? Like just randomly, like one Friday night, one Saturday, just you go to the beach. I know a lot of freshmen like to go to that infamous beach trip at midnight. I know a lot of people like to do that. Um, it's it's what a lot of it's a tradition, honestly. Here, um, but there was this one time when I was growing up, my my family picked me up from school, and I was wearing a school uniform, right? So I just took come out of school, right, and they drive by with the car and everything, and I was hopping in, and it was weird because it was just supposed to be my dad. But my dad, my mom, and my sister picked me up. <laughs> Strangest thing. That, 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 just, that just doesn't usually happen with me. And so I step into the car, and my dad's like, hey, uh, what are you doing? I was like, oh, I'm just we're going back home, right? We're going to probably get some dinner. No big deal, right? He's like, oh, OK, yeah, that's cool. Uh, you want to go somewhere? You want to go to a hotel two hours from here? I was like, dad, I have homework. I have stuff to do. I have a weekend to do. Like, I have, I have stuff to do. It's like, man, that's, that sucks, man. We're gonna have a fun time. We already got the whole family ready. We're ready to go right now. You, you want to come with us? I mean, we're, we're ready right now, right? I was like, ah, all right, well, let me at least go home, pack my clothes, let me get my homework, get everything situated, right? Let me get, let me get my stuff. Up. He was like, no, 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 it's not gonna be worth it if we don't leave right now. He's like, no, 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 we gotta leave right now. If we don't leave right now. That it's, it's just not going to be a fun trip. And so this is kind of a parallel into Luke chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. You can go to the Bible and open that up with me. Um, it says here, One day Jesus called together his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority to cast out all demons and to heal all diseases. Now, doing a little bit of a word study, uh, I actually realized that one day Jesus called together Called and together means syn synclesia, syn synclesia, whatever. I don't know if it's a Greek term or how to say it. I didn't take Greek. But um, it's, it's a really good word. And in some translations, called is at the beginning and together is at the end. Um, and I just found that to be so interesting because calls and together is like two separate words and they mean the same exact thing. So it's Jesus called together the 12 disciples. He called together. He brought them together in this story. Right? And so the main point that I want to push today is he has called us all to preach. Clearly, we're all preaching, too. Um, he has called us all to preach. And with that, he prepares, empowers, and provides confidence in preaching the gospel. Every single one of us in this class today, he empowers us. He gives us the spirit of the Lord is in every single one of us to preach the gospel. Similarly, point, point number one is... He gives us power and authority to drive out all demons and all diseases that are in the world. Jesus calls them, and now they have the Spirit of the Lord embodying authority in every situation, in every circumstance. He ha we have the authority in every situation, in every circumstance, whatever we go through, to have authority and power. I just find it interesting because the context before this, the, the passage before this, Jesus does a miracle. The passage after this, he does a miracle. And it's just kind of squeezed between two miracles, telling us, no, 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 you can also do miracles too. You can also do what he did. Jesus calls us to be like him. Yes, sir. Digging a little bit deeper into it, um, point number two goes off of verse uh, three. Take nothing for your journey, he instructed them. Don't take a walking stick, a traveler's bag, food, money, or even a change of clothes. Just like my dad told me, don't, don't take anything. I have everything ready. He even told me, no, it's okay. I, I will buy your clothes. I will buy your food. Whatever you don't have, I will buy for you. Similarly, Jesus is telling us that. Don't, don't bring anything. When we're going somewhere, when I'm taking you somewhere, when I'm taking you to your plan, to your destiny, to your purpose, I have everything that you need. I have all things ready for you. And this is for my next point. He provides a preparation and a plan for wherever we need to go. Similar to my dad, he provides every single step of the way. Sometimes we get scared. Sometimes we get anxious about the future. Oh, no, I don't know if this is really for me. Sometimes we ask the question, I'm kind of worried about whether or not this is for me. I'm kind of worried or not whether or not God has called me to this. No, he's prepared you. If he's called you, he's prepared you. If he's called you, he has a plan for you. If he's called you, 
which it should be everyone in this class, we're in this class together, he has everything set out for you. Yeah. Point number three, whenever we go out to preach the gospel, we may experience some sort of rejection. And this is point number three. There's purpose and confidence in rejection. When we preach, we got to know that sometimes the seed isn't always going to be received that well, but the seed is going to be planted. It's going to be planted. The word of God is powerful. The word of God is always going to get into the hearts of people. But in verse 4, it says, Wherever you go, stay in that same house until you leave town. And if a town refuses to welcome you, shake its dust from your feet. As you leave to show that you have abandoned those people in their faith. <laughs> Similarly, shake the dust off of your feet. Keep preaching the gospel. Keep preaching to those people because God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And you're meant to preach somewhere. You're meant to preach at different conferences, different uh, sermons, different things. You're meant to preach that. You're meant to preach the good news. And this is verse number six. So they began their circuit of the villages, preaching the good news and healing the sick. What's your hesitation? Are you hesitating? Hmm. I know I've been hesitating as well. It's scary. It's a scary time in our lives. We're, we're, you know, I'm in my senior year. I'm um, kind of scared about the next steps of my life. But he provides purpose and confidence. Once again, my main point, he has called us all to preach. And with that, he prepares, he empowers, and he provides confidence when we preach the gospel. <clears throat> you are enough. You are called and you are meant for a reason to preach. You are meant to preach for a reason. And with that, I'm just going to go ahead and pray out. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for allowing us to come together. Um, I just pray that the Spirit of the Lord will just continue to live in us, and that whenever we preach the gospel, that your name will always be there, and that the seed of the gospel will always be planted, no matter what the rejection we may receive, that the seed of the gospel will always be there. And that you will always show your spirit. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh,